Hi friends, Brigitte here with What Tomorrow Brings and today we're taking you on a tour of Villa Nova de Gaia. It's just across the Don Luis Bridge from Center Porto and if you're visiting, you definitely gotta put this place on your itinerary. It's got food, port wine, more than you can ever imagine and just good vibes all around. There's a restaurant we want to check out and we want to take you along with us, so let's go. This is Taverninha do Manuel. We're sitting outside because the weather is incredible. There's no wind, it's like 60 degrees out here and it's just the perfect, perfect Sunday. We put in our food, but what is a Portuguese lunch or dinner without starting with some fresh olives and bread and of course some wine. The olives here are black, thick olives and it seems like they've got fresh garlic, olive oil and rosemary. They're really, really, really delicious and super juicy, perfect amount of brine on them. Okay, so they just brought out our bacalao bras and it was like all happening at the same time because I am loving this empanada. This is so delicious. It's full of pork, so well flavored. And now I have the bacalao here. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Oh my God, it's so freaking good. Mm, one more. So juicy. Mm, look at that. All right, so our bacalao abaraz has arrived, and this is a casserole dish made in the traditional Portuguese style with onions, egg, parsley, and shredded bacalao pieces. So it's kind of all held together with the egg. I have it's kind of like a, like an omelet. You get a lot of the the flavor of the egg and the texture like a, an omelet, but it's like a soft scramble. So it's not hard egginess. It all kind of blends together nicely with the bacalao. And it has a creaminess to it, kind of like when you're eating soft scramble. And then you have the onions. You barely taste them as far as like chewing because they're sautéed so nicely. The bacalao is not very salty. It's a very kind of home style kind of uh, casserole style dish. It's excellent. Can we get another bite? Yeah. I see a little bit of like potato shoestring fry in there too. Mm. Mm. That bite was even better. Mm. You can taste the olive oil. Mm. Very rich but not overpowering. Very good. So our stir fried pork dish has gotten here and it is a beautiful stew of cubed pork chunks. And as soon as I start stirring it, you can get the aromas. It's like sweet and sour. I can smell, uh, what's the name? Like Korean, cumin, cumin. Oh, you've got like the nice fatty jelliness of the pork cubes, kind of like a soft chicharrón. And you've got some pickled vegetables here, pickled cauliflower, some olives. And this looks kind of like um like a flour dumpling, like a fried dumpling. So I'm excited to try that as well. Let's go in for one. Got some jus and pork. Mm. 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 Spectacular. The pork just breaks up in your mouth and it's juicy from the fat that's just like protecting the meat and the jus is like a spicy cumin sauce in there. Oh, it's just like the uh, like kind of like the rendering juices of the pork. Not, not a lot of like extra stuff done to it. It's very good. And the fries just got here that are supposed to go with it too. Let me get a little bit of cauliflower. That just cuts the fat. Oh, so good. 
Mm. It's like a flour dumpling. Mm. <laughs> like stuffing. Like Thanksgiving stuffing. <laughs> Very good. I'm gonna get some fries and dip it in the jus. Let's see. Dip it and just like pour it over. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness. One more good one. Wow. Alright, here we go. Mm. Look at this piece of fat here. Normally what you would save to make a chicharrón is just here to make flavor and add texture to this dish. That's just perfect. I'm going to put that on a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know what tastes better, the pork or the fat. <laughs> Woo! All done here. Very cool. I'm so glad we came here. And a whole experience. From the moment you sit down to the moment you pay for your bill. George, our waiter, was awesome. Everybody here is super friendly. Don't worry if you don't speak English or if you only speak English. Everybody here speaks English. We're gonna head over now to the oldest pork wine cellar in all of Porto called Kofki, which is actually right next door. So in this pack we start with two white ports. The first one it's the fine white. Fine white it's considered medium sweet. have a higher alcohol volume of about 20%. Definitely taste it in here. It's almost like a sweet whiskey, like an old fashioned or something like that. But I even get notes of like pineapple in here. So this on its own can be your dessert. Just perfectly crafted as it is. It's also served chilled which helps bring out the notes more and kind of mellow out the alcohols. Mm. Excellent. Let's try another one. This is the ruby port. And as you can see how like dark and ruby red this one is, it's because it's aged for a much shorter amount of time. And it's in these huge, huge barrels where most of the wine does not touch the oak itself. So it retains a lot of that fresh, juicy, dark red berry flavor. As a little bit of a palate cleanser, I'm gonna have a piece of chocolate just to kind of clean out the palate. And the ruby definitely calls for kind of a, an astringent uh, bite of food. So I'm gonna do some dark chocolate. Perfect. So this is our first tawny port and it is called the coleta, which means harvest. And you can see immediately the change in color from your dark ruby to your tawny. And the major difference here is that it's aged in a small oak barrel. So the wine has more contact with the barrel itself and it has a chance to evaporate. So it does become sweeter over time. Mm. Wow, you're getting a lot more flavor of the oak barrel here. Woody, a um, little bit more kind of tart too, surprisingly. And I'm not getting really like cinnamon flavor, but smoky, 
woody, um, deep aged vanilla. Mm. A little bit of lemon also. Totally different from the ruby. This is the 30 year tawny. This one is kind of like the top of the pinnacle as far as like your range of fine dry all the way to tawny aged. Now this one is like full on golden color and you're getting kind of a little bit of everybody. You're getting the fruity, the honey, the vanilla, the smoky, the oaky, all of it. This one is like drinking a wonderful whiskey. And I don't want to compare the two. They're two different things. That's kind of the closest that I would describe. Something luscious that doesn't need anything to help it. It's aged and become its own flavor all on its own. You don't have to add anything to it. This you can have for dessert. You can be sitting by the water and enjoying it. I'm always torn between which ones I like the most, whether it's the ruby or the tawny. Just because the ruby, I feel like I can sit down and drink it for a long time, but the tawny is way stronger in alcohol volume. So I feel like I can only have maybe one or two and be like, all right, I'm done. But this is excellent. What an amazing time we had eating and drinking through Gaia today. We're headed up to the Jardim do Moro right now to watch the sunset. It is pretty cloudy or overcast today, but I think that by the time sunset comes around, we'll be able to catch some beautiful, beautiful views. So we're headed over there now. We've arrived at Jardim do Moro and nature has not failed us. The sun is coming through the clouds and it's lighting up the city. It's so gorgeous out here. There's people selling beer and little snacks. So it's like a whole, it's a whole thing out here. And it's full of people. Everybody has shown up. The clouds have not deterred anybody. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us today on our tour of Gaia. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support our channel. And we can't wait to show you more of Porto and the rest of Europe. Bye.